Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to receive automated emails for upcoming events using Power Automate. If you like Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, and Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting on more videos in those areas. So for my events, I have them all labeled in a SharePoint calendar. I'll use this as my database, sort of, to enter in new events for the week. And for this flow, I'll be using a week. So I'm going to set up a weekly flow on Sunday. So it's fresh in my inbox for Monday morning when I work. So we'll be using Power Automate for this. So we want to use a scheduled cloud flow because we want this to run every Sunday. So I can get the upcoming events for the week. So we'll say automated weekly events email. We'll have this send 3 p.m. on Sunday. So we'll start it today and it will run on Sunday each week. All right, so we have the reoccurrence. We don't need to do anything for that. The next step is going to be I need to get the items from my SharePoint list. So we'll be using the get items action. And if you have a long list, you may need to set the pagination to something higher. I think the default's around, it's either 256 or 100 items. So if you have more than that, you'll wanna set this to a higher number. I'll just set it to 1,000, just to be safe, even though my list only has around six events. And this is in my marketing list. And for my list name, this list name is Event Calendar. All right, so I'm actually going to be using uh, the filter query here because I want to use filter out the data, which is between today and seven days out. So for this filter query, I'll be using two statements and I'll be using it on my date field in SharePoint. So we'll start it out with date. We want to do date is greater than or equals to, so that is GE. And now we need to write the expression. So we need the date that's bigger than today. So we want to convert this from UTC now because all time in Power Automate is defaulted to UTC. And if you're in like a time zone where it's a different day, it can screw up the flow. But we want to convert this to my time zone, which is Eastern Standard Time. So we want to convert from UTC and we need a string which would be UTC now, because I want the current time. And then I want, I want to convert this to Eastern Standard Time. If you have a different time zone, do you want to look that up for the correct syntax? Mine is Eastern Standard Time. And then for the format, I want this to be year, 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 month, month, day, day, because it looks, when you do a greater than or equals to, it looks by the it goes from left to right. So I have to make sure the year is first because that will screw up if it's not. Go ahead and click on OK. So this will get the current date. And we can close up this parenthesis. Next, we want to do an and statement. Because now I need to get seven days out. And I want all the results from today between today and seven days out. So we'll write another expression right here. So that would be date is less than or equals to a single uh, quote. And we have to go in and we will use the add days function. Now it's asking for a timestamp. And we want to convert this again from UTC now. And we want to get the UTC. UTC now and destination time zone. For me, this will be Eastern Standard Time. And then it'll ask me for the format. So again, I'll just use year, 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 month, month, day, day. And the times and month have to be capitalized. All right, so we can go to the on days function by moving over into the next parenthesis. So we got the timestamp. Now we want to add days and you can use a numer numerical value. Mine will be seven. Then it'll ask for a format. I'll just do 
the format I've been using. And I'll have all this code in the uh, description below so you can just input what you want. So single quote, parenthesis, and this should be good. All right, so for the next step, we actually want to map this. I'll be using a select statement. So you want to get the values from the get items. And then I want just want the, the event, which is the title field. What else do we have? We'll do details and then we'll do the date. I'm using the select because I want to put this in an HTML table, which I can send in e an email later on. So we have the select here. Next, I will use an HTML table. So HTML, create HTML table, and I'm going to do it from the select output. So let's go ahead and save it right now, and we will test just this part to make sure it is pulling the correct data. So I should have. Today is the 25th, so everything up until February 1st, which is Rick's birthday, the tire change, the dog grooming, and football Sunday. So we should see four events here. So if we look at the create HTML table, as you can see, our flow is working because we have the events. So let me just finish this up and send it in an email. So send an email. B2. So if you have a user you just want to send this to, it's for me, it's going to be myself. And then upcoming events for the week. And for the body, you can customize it, but you want to have the create HTML table output in there. That'll actually send the table. And you can make the HTML table um, look fancier if you add a compose and then if you put css and html that's a little more complicated but you could find some nice templates online i will go ahead and run this manually run flow and i should receive an email with the upcoming events for the week as you can see we got the email and these are all the events for the week so i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, again, I will put the code in the description so you know what to use and you can just replace what I put in with what you're using. So if you like the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will catch you in the next one.